This is the world's most powerful mini PC and I can't wait to test it. B-Link's tiny computer packs the Ryzen AI9 HX370 CPU. I'm glad I happen to have one right here. I'm not only gonna test this thing out, but I'm also gonna compare it to the other most powerful. This is a Mac mini with the M2 Pro chip in it. And for now, it is the most powerful Mac mini until maybe the end of the month. And also for now, we kind of already have a winner as far as size goes. But let's see what the performance shows. What's so special about this mini PC anyway? Well, mini PCs are coming of age now. They were just the bastard stepchild. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on YouTube, but now they're becoming more popular. And this is because of the new breed of chips that can be put in tiny little enclosures. You know, the old Intel Core i9, i7s, those are done. You can never fit something like that into something this small and have it perform well, not throttle, and stay cool and quiet. Well, those days are gone. Apple Silicon kind of led the way, and Intel and AMD are both following suit. But not only that, mini PCs were always a generation behind. However, now, with this release of B-Link Sear 9, uh, Sear means serious, I guess. We're getting serious with these things. These jokes, Alex, they gotta go. Probably Series 9. But it is housing the latest AMD Ryzen mobile chip. The Ryzen AI9 HX370. It goes up to 5.1 gigahertz. I recently made a video on this laptop, which has the AI9 in it. It performs extremely well, but you're gonna pay for it. So this machine is not cheap, but you're getting good specs. You're getting 32 gigs of RAM on there, one terabyte SSD with the latest CPU, and AMD Radeon 890. GPU. So you can actually game on this thing. They also pack a crazy amount of I.O. in it. HDMI, DisplayPort, four USB-A. Those are still useful. Even the Mac Mini has two of them, but the Mac Mini has four Thunderbolt connections, and that's pretty useful these days. This one only has one USB 4, 40 gigabit per second speed, and one USB-C connection on the front that's 10 gigabit per second. And I know what people are gonna say, like, why are you comparing a Mac to a PC anyway? I use both and I run Windows on my Mac using Parallels because I still use Windows. I use Visual Studio, but that's when I'm portable. When I'm at home, I've started running Windows on mini PCs and I use mini PCs now for media servers, file servers, installing Linux boxes. They pack a punch, but let's compare the out of the box performance, shall we? Because a lot of development can happen cross platform. You can do some of the same development on a Mac as you can on a Windows machine with WSL, for example, Windows subsystem for Linux. We are on the verge of getting a new Mac mini though. So we'll see how that compares. Let me know if you wanna see that one that does come out if you're watching this later on. This is the Ugreen Nexode power bank. 20,000 milliamp hours, 130 watts. It's compact, it's lightweight, and it's powerful. Designed with a slim columnar shape, it's easy to carry without adding bulk. Perfect for commuting or travel. With 100 watts of super fast charging, this power bank can charge a MacBook Pro 16 inch to 43% or an iPhone 15 to 60% in just 30 minutes. Multiple ports allow simultaneous charging of several devices, including laptops. The TFT Smart Display provides real time data like battery level, charge time, and power output, giving you full visibility of your device's status. With 20,000 milliamp hours of capacity, it's airline approved and capable of charging an iPhone 15 up to four times, making it ideal for long trips. Ugreen's full lineup offers solutions for every power need, from small daily charges to high capacity power banks, they've got you covered. Check out the Ugreen Nexode power bank, 20,000 milliamp hours, 130 watts, your portable high performance power solution. We're gonna kick things off here with a simple browser-based test. This essentially tests single-threaded JavaScript performance, and it's using a pretty popular test called Speedometer 3. So I'm gonna kick that off on both of these machines. What this does is basically mimic a bunch of to-do applications in different JavaScript frameworks, adding items, subtracting items, showing charts, graphs, and so on. Ho-ho, oh, okay, and we have a score. That was pretty fast. Now I am doing this in Chrome, which is not the native browser for either one of these, and these are slightly different versions of Chrome, by the way, because on the Mac, we've got the ARM version of Chrome, and on the PC, we've got the x64 version of Chrome. There's a lot of variables here, but it doesn't matter because in the end, what matters is how the applications run in the browser. 33.7 is the score on the Mac Mini, 28.2 on the B-Link, which is a very nice, respectable score, but it does not beat out the Mac Mini. And I do have to wonder why that happened, because I already did run Geekbench on this, 
this. And here are the Geekbench results. You'll see that on the Mac Mini M2 Pro, we get pretty typical scores for the M2 Pro, 2,700 for single core and 13,000 for multi-core, which is definitely less than the Sir 9. 2889 is the single core, 14,809 for the multi-core. And this is in balanced mode. If we take this up to high performance, we get even higher scores, which I ran also 2911 and 14,940. Really nice Geekbench scores, much higher than the Mac Mini. But as you can see, sometimes that does not necessarily translate to real world performance as we saw more tests coming up but I do want to see how this test behaves in the native browser so that would be Safari on the Mac and the infamous at this point edge on the PC oh okay a higher score on the Mac mini 36.8 here and a lower score on edge 26.7 that is actually a little bit surprising to me I would expect the native browser to be a little bit better but in this case it's not moving on to a compiled application this is the mandelbrot test which i usually do on the channel and this one is in c sharp so i've compiled it in release mode and we're going to keep an eye on the cpu there's 10 cores here on the mac mini six performance cores and four efficiency cores and we've got all the same cores 12 of them though on the amd machine and that's of course 24 cores multi-threaded and for this test we've got the schwarzenegger to help us out schwarzenegger 2.0 always labeled your power adapters for those of you that are new to the channel when i push this big red button the fingers go down and push the enter key at the same time and we're making this a race on the mac we have the handy time command and i'm going to run the release build 16,000 is the parameter and i'm using the dotnet cli on the windows machine there is no time command so i'm using measure command in powershell which will essentially give us the time that this thing runs. Yes, I know that even though it gives us the time, it's still fun to do this with a Schwarzenegger, okay? It's more fun. And let's go. <laughs> there they go. They're executing and check this out. This test is going to be uh, pretty heavy in CPU usage. It's a multi-threaded test, multi-core test, I should say. But this test is limited by what the .NET framework has access to at one time. So even though it's a multi-core test, it's not going to fully utilize all the cores. It's going to kind of bounce around and use some of them. And you can kind of see that by the chart here. We have a result on the Mac Mini. And we're still waiting for the PC to finish. Wow, that was a pretty big difference. Even though our utilization here is obviously not the same, but this is a complete surprise to me. It's not related to the machine. We saw the multi-core Geekbench score on the AMD machine and it was higher than the Mac Mini. But Mac Mini still won this particular test. 29 seconds on the Mac Mini. And we have 59 seconds on the PC. Big difference there. And it just goes to show you that even though Geekbench is going to be faster, Geekbench is optimized to use all the cores. But when you build a C-sharp program, even though it is built to use multiple threads, it might not use all the threads. There is a test, however, that will. And this is the Python version of Mandelbrot. Here's the time command for executing this in the Python Conda environment. Both of these have Python 3.12 in mini Conda. And this is the command, measure command on the PC. Let's go. <laughs> nice. Look at that wall of usage. On the PC, we've got all the cores being fully utilized. On the Mac, we've got a green wall of cores being fully utilized. This test right here, definitely uses all the cores. And since the PC has 12 of them and the Mac has 10 of them, guess what? The PC is probably going to win. And this is my guess, but I haven't seen it yet. And yeah, it finished first. We'll see what the time is. And there we go with the Mac. Now it's not that far behind, but this is about the same percentage as we saw in the scores for Geekbench. Check this out. 32 seconds total for the PC to finish this test and 37 seconds for the Mac. That's beautiful artwork right there for that CPU. Same same thing for the history chart here on the Mac. Let's dig a little deeper. I have a C++ sorting algorithm here, and this is a quick sort algorithm that's uh, using one core. But I wanna see if I can reproduce that Geekbench result just with using plain old C++ code. That's pretty simple, but we're gonna be sorting 1 million integers and i'm going to build this for native on each one of these platforms so there's the c code there's my size of the array on the terminal i'm going to use clang plus plus with the o3 optimization dash o and i'm going to build that and let's time it except 
I don't want any of the output. I'm gonna send that to dev now. Probably shouldn't matter. I got 2.5 seconds the first time. It's too small of a sample to really make that much of a difference. 2.3 seconds. All right, over here, I also have 1 million integers and I'm gonna build this now for X64. And I'm using Visual Studio here to build this, which doesn't have the exact same flags, but I have to approximate it. And here we have 5.6 seconds versus 2.3. Even when I use dash 02 here with Clan++, it's a little bit slower, but it's 2.4 seconds, but it's not quite as slow as 5.6 seconds over here. I also have a multi-core example. I'm going to build that one and let's see what that one gives us. <laughs> I tried executing the C++ file. That's not going to work. Let's see what that gives us. I got a compiler error. That's why. Oh, I'm using a merge sort here and I have my array is too large. Apparently, here we go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of a large array. How many zeros is that? We got a hundred million. All right, let's see if this will compile. Okay, there we go, that compiled. Let's run this. This might take a little bit longer, not that long. 3.7 seconds to sort 100 million using merge sort. I love merge sort. It's my favorite algorithm for sorting. And you can see the little spike on the CPU cores. That's when the merge sort happened. It's using all the CPU cores. We already kind of know what's gonna happen and who's the boss in multi-core. It's the PC. I just wanna see if any of these C++ optimizations can really help out the Mac as it did with the single core. Okay, 2.2 seconds here to do 100 million integer sort. So the most powerful mini Mac as of right now is beating the most powerful mini PC as of right now. Now there's one more test I wanna do, which has to do with LLMs and how fast they are. Because, well, we have this beautiful new GPU that's inside the PC here, the AMD, and LM Studio can actually take advantage of that. So when I load a model, I've got this little Llama 3.2, 1 billion parameter model, this tiny little thing, and you can actually specify how much of it can you send to the GPU. You. I'm gonna do the whole thing, why not? When we are on the Mac though, you don't get that option. Select the model and that's it, or how much of it to offload to the GPU, you just load it up. One more thing I wanna add here is, even though I've selected Llama 3.2, and I go into more details in other videos, this one is the Hugging Quants Llama 3.2 Instruct Q8 GGUF file. This one is different. This one is coming from MLX community. LM Studio knows that on Macs, the latest and greatest thing to use to have the fastest performance, that's Apple's LLM framework that actually has much better performance on these Apple Silicon machines. Notice the RAM usage. The RAM usage here is 2.6 gigabytes on the Mac and only 555 megabytes on the PC. All right, here we go. I'm gonna say write a 1000 word story and go. Okay, that's going pretty well. Just to make sure this is in fact offloading to the GPU, which is really nice. We have a total of 1,455 tokens, which is around a thousand words that was generated. The tokens per second is 51.23, which is actually a really nice respectable number and 0 0.07 seconds to first token. So that's really good. Let's do the same thing over here on the Mac, write a 1,000 word story and go that looks like about the same speed it may be just a tad bit faster but we're gonna see when the number shows up both of these are going at really respectable speeds though not that much slower than chat gpt but it is faster on the mac at 74.8 tokens per second 0.62 seconds to the first token and this is probably a direct result of this being four bit quantized mlx model where here it looks like an eight bit quantized model so a four bit quantized model is going to be faster just by the sheer nature of it. So for a mini PC, this thing keeps up pretty well and you can also game on it. Now, as far as LLMs go, if you wanna see what this is and how I built it, cause this is my fastest LLM machine, check out this video right over here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.